In the mountains of Hawaii, hidden beneath dense invasive forests, an extraordinary ecological transformation is occurring. Native Hawaiians are uncovering the remains of an ingenious thousand-year-old food system using ancestral knowledge backed by modern science to restore stone terraces that once fed thousands. This project represents a revolutionary approach that combines cultural recovery with large-scale environmental restoration, demonstrating that solutions to climate change and food insecurity can be found in traditional wisdom. If stories like this resonate with you, consider subscribing. We are documenting indigenous innovations that could reshape how we think about sustainability. Let's understand what makes this system so extraordinary and why its restoration represents much more than agricultural revitalization. It is a blueprint for sustainable living that the modern world needs to comprehend. The genius of traditional land management is clear. The Ahupua represents one of the most sophisticated land management systems developed by humanity. These ancient land divisions extended from mountain peaks to ocean shores, creating integrated watersheds where each component served multiple functions. Water flowed from mountain sources through different elevation zones where communities lived and cultivated, eventually reaching the ocean. The system centered on growing kualo, a starchy root that requires consistently moist soil. Stone-walled terraces were strategically flooded to create ideal growing conditions. Dr. Kamana Bima, a native Hawaiian scholar and professor of Hawaiian studies at the University of Hawaii, explains that the Ahupua'a system demonstrates principles we are only now rediscovering in modern permaculture. Fresh water essentially functioned as the economy. Whatever actions you took upstream created negative or positive impacts on everyone downstream, fostering accountability and stewardship. The system operated under principles of communal land tenure, where each person equitably accessed the island's most valuable resource, fresh water. Cultural practitioner Kaleikoa Kaio notes that it created a beautiful symbiotic relationship between people and nature and among community members. Kaleikoa Kaio says that this was our governance system, our way of organizing society around abundance. The Historical Transformation of the System The Ahupua'a system suffered catastrophic disruption in 1848 with the Great Mahele, legislation that privatized Hawaiian lands. Land ownership was completely foreign to Hawaiian culture. This event fundamentally restructured Hawaiian society, transferring communal resources into private property. Foreign companies rapidly acquired lands, transforming Ahupua'a systems to cultivate export crops like sugar and pineapple. Native Hawaiians were systematically displaced from ancestral lands. Hawaii transitioned from a highly organized, self-sufficient society to one where 90% of food is now imported, a complete inversion of food security. However, a group of Native Hawaiians initiated a resistance movement that would change everything land recovery and restoration. After sustained activism, the state of Hawaii negotiated and eventually granted a land parcel to the community. The location presented significant challenges. Remote mountainous lands were covered with invasive vegetation. Community organizer Kaleo Patterson reflects, we took that opportunity and discovered that beneath the invasive forest, we had a gem. It is no longer a protest. It is about building. Now it is time to work. 30 years later, the community has created a stronghold of Hawaiian identity, an entire village bringing hundreds of people together to restore ancient stone terraces. Restoration through traditional engineering. The restoration work is methodical and labor intensive. Teams clear invasive vegetation, excavate buried stones, and reconstruct terrace walls using rocks that have been displaced over decades. They are deciphering the original engineering and identifying where new terraces should be positioned. Restoration coordinator Makana Paris explains they are standing on the base of a massive complex, approximately 10 restored terraces of the 100 that extend into the valley. She says this was their massive food producing machine. To date, the project has completed the restoration of approximately 12 hectares of functional terraces known as the Kapuna terraces. Each restored terrace can produce between 180 and 250 kilograms of kalo per growing cycle, which lasts approximately 9 to 12 months. This means that a single hectare of well-managed terraces 
can generate between 1,500 and 2,000 kilograms annually of this staple food rich in complex carbohydrates and essential minerals. The engineering sophistication becomes evident when examining the water management system. The ancestors understood the gravity and physics required to channel water through multiple terraces and streams. Makana Paris notes with admiration that it has already been engineered for us. Dr. Aurora Kagawa Viviani, a hydrologist at the University of Hawaii, studied traditional Hawaiian water systems. She says, what is remarkable is the precision. These systems managed water at scales from individual terraces to complete watersheds, maintaining consistent flows without pumps or electricity. It is gravity-fed hydrology at its finest. The technology of abundance is visible on site. All water enters from a single source where gravity and land contour align perfectly. No pumps, no electricity. Pure gravity-fed distribution from the stream. The inflow is measured at approximately 15 to 20 liters per minute during normal conditions, increasing to 80 to 100 liters per minute during heavy rains. Water diverts from the stream through pipes into the highest terrace, the system beginning point. Freshly planted Kahlo, just one to two weeks old, receives consistent water flow maintained at a depth of 5 to 15 centimeters, depending on the plant growth stage. When water reaches optimal level, it flows to the next terrace through carefully positioned pipes. Paris explains they have installed pipes at exact elevations where they want water to spill from the top patch to the second patch, and she points to the crystal clear water and how clean it is. The terraces are designed with precise slopes of 1 to 3 degrees, inclined enough to allow gravitational flow but flat enough to retain water and sediments. Stone walls vary in height from 30 centimeters in upper terraces to over one and a half meters in lower sections. All are constructed without mortar, using only weight and friction between carefully selected stones. Critical design elements ensure functionality. Water enters each loai, or terrace pond, on one side and exits the opposite side, creating uniform distribution. Water residence time in each terrace is approximately two to four hours, allowing complete particle sedimentation and nutrient absorption by plants. Each terrace has unique design characteristics adapted to the site microtopography. Water zigzags across the landscape, maximizing ground contact time. This extended contact hydrates the shallow water table, benefiting the entire ecology. Dr. Kagawa Viviani notes the slow water movement causes sediments to settle in garden beds, while plants naturally uptake nutrients and filter pollutants. Measurements show that water exits the system with a 40% reduction in suspended solids and a 35% decrease in nitrates compared to the input. These are the same principles seen in cutting-edge constructed wetlands, yet this is traditional technology perfected over generations. Water temperature measurements also reveal interesting data. Water enters the system at approximately 18 to 20 degrees Celsius, and after passing through multiple sun-exposed terraces, it exits at 22 to 24 degrees Celsius. This gradual warming favors KLO growth and creates thermal microhabitats that benefit different aquatic species. Beyond agriculture, ecological integration. Where water returns to the stream, called the Hoi, it demonstrates the system's elegance. The water is clean, clear, and improved from its entry point. After exiting the final terrace, water flows through additional sediment ponds before rejoining the stream. The site is approximately five to six miles from the shoreline. During heavy rains, when the stream swells from waterfall runoff, something remarkable happens. Native Oopu fish appear in the restoration ponds, some reaching full maturity. Since restoration began, Biodiversity monitoring has documented the return of 23 native species that had not been observed in the area for decades. This includes 12 native aquatic insect species, 6 bird species that feed in the restored wetlands, and 5 endemic aquatic plant species now colonizing the terrace edges. Biodiversity is returning. These native fish migrate from the ocean, navigating upstream to these interior waters. Something about the current tells them it is time to go up, Paris explains. They have sucker-like appendages on their stomachs that allow them to climb rocks and waterfalls. The word migrate captures that movement. 
The community plans to develop three separate breeding ponds specifically for these fish, each with approximately 200 square meters of surface area. These ponds could eventually produce between 15 and 25 kilograms of fish per year, a significant protein source complementing the carbohydrate production from Kalo. These fish were a true food source throughout the river system, Paris notes. Farmers did not need to travel to the ocean for protein. Dr. Richard McKenzie, a forest ecologist with the U.S. DTE, a Forest Service Pacific Southwest Research Station, emphasizes the bi-directional flow. In healthy traditional systems, it is not just resources flowing downhill from mountain to sea. Nutrients and organisms also flow upward, fish migrations, nutrient cycling through different elevations. It is a complete ecosystem, not just agricultural infrastructure. The phrase bidirectional flow underlines that idea. Social technology, the heart of the system. When land clearing reveals ancient engineering throughout the landscape, something profound emerges. When we peel back layers, we see a plan established thousands of years ago that we can still see today, Paris observes. Our answers to our problems are here on the Aina. Restoration reveals knowledge. The restoration has required over 50,000 hours of manual labor accumulated during the last two years on the Kapuna terraces alone. For many participants, the work is entirely new. Even me, I had never passed stones or done this stuff, admits one community member. When we were small kids, that was not what you learned. Yet through this work, something transformative occurs. Younger community members articulate expansive visions. I can see the community expanding, all these eucalyptus trees replaced with native Hawaiian plants, more farmland, people visiting to learn about culture, shares one participant. The idea of future generations guides their vision. The momentum is undeniable. To reach the next level, the vision is clear. A fully restored Ahupua system providing a blueprint for the world. The expansion plan contemplates restoring the remaining 88 hectares over the next 10 years, which would require approximately 250,000 additional work hours and enable direct feeding of a community of over 500 people with local kelo, fish, and complementary crop production. We can live in healthy relationship with nature, Patterson emphasizes. Getting more resources for this restoration will expand the network we have already built. The momentum is here. This thing is working. Deeper in the forest, approximately 50 yards upslope from current restoration sites, archaeology lies hidden beneath invasive trees. These fast-growing invasives are among the world's fastest and they are actively destroying ancient structures. Project manager Kaylee Nunokawa explains that the invasives are moving old walls, outgrowing their space to the point where they dismantle what our ancestors left behind. She says, if we do not act now, this will become complete destruction in a very short time. It is critical that we intervene while we can still make a difference. Dr. Creighton Litton, a tropical forest ecologist at the University of Hawaii, confirms the urgency. Invasive species like strawberry guava, Psidium cattleyanum, and Albizia, Falcataria molucana, can grow between 3 and 5 meters annually in optimal Hawaiian conditions. Their aggressive root systems are literally tearing apart stone structures that survived centuries. We have documented terrace walls that are 800 years old that have collapsed in less than 20 years due to invasive root pressure. The window for intervention is narrow. Community studies have mapped approximately 65 additional hectares of ancient terraces beneath the invasive forest. Each year that passes without intervention represents irreversible loss of archaeological knowledge and productive capacity. The incredibly abundant food system is simply waiting to be uncovered. Nunokawa states that if we can do it here, we can do it all over our islands. And if we can do it all over our islands, we can do this globally. We have to look to indigenous peoples for answers and clues about sustaining life in the future. The true innovation is social cohesion. Every detail about water care has been considered in this system. Growing food and restoring ecology occur simultaneously. No wonder it persisted generation after generation. But here is the crucial insight. The genius is not in the stone walls, water flow, or forest management. It is in the social cohesion underlying land management. 
People living at the watershed top and bottom share interests. They must collaborate and cooperate for the system to function. This interdependence created accountability structures that modern environmental governance struggles to achieve. Dr. Jonathan Osorio, professor of Hawaiian studies, explains that prior to European arrival in 1778, native Hawaiians lived in highly organized, self-sufficient, subsistence-based social systems founded on communal land tenure with sophisticated language, culture, and belief systems. The ahupua'a was not just agriculture, it was governance, economics, spirituality, and culture integrated into landscape management. A model for global application. All land activities connect to economic, social, and cultural conditions. Hawaii is demonstrating not just for Hawaiian lands, but for the world. Modern challenges such as climate change, food insecurity, water scarcity, and social fragmentation are precisely the problems traditional Hawaiian systems addressed. Dr. Beamer notes that these are not primitive technologies we are reviving, they are advanced solutions our contemporary society desperately needs. We are not going backward, we are going forward to what has always worked. Data supports this claim. Compared to modern industrial agriculture that typically loses between 50 and 70% of applied water through evaporation and runoff, the Ahupua'a system retains and utilizes over 85% of the water entering the system. In terms of carbon sequestration, the 12 restored hectares sequester approximately 18 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent annually through plant biomass, organic matter accumulation in soils, and reduced emissions from decreased food imports. The restoration work continues. Each stone repositioned, each terrace cleared, each fish that returns upstream represents more than ecological recovery. It is cultural reclamation, a practical demonstration that another way of living based on abundance, reciprocity, and ecological intelligence remains possible. The Ahupua'a system lasted centuries because it aligned human needs with ecological processes. In rediscovering this alignment, native Hawaiians are not just restoring their heritage, they are pioneering quantifiable and replicable solutions for humanity's future.